YouTube. So, hi everyone. It's me. <laughs> Ash <Robin. laughs> um, it's, yeah, it is me. Um, Ash Raddatz. I'm here with my co teachers, mentors, Jenna Schuldice and Kirsten Lewis. And we have a game with us today. Um, these are, are uh, some of, some, just very few amount. <laughs> um, otherwise this whole screen would be filled many times over um, of our alumni students from our No More Fucking Around year long program. And we thought it would be fun to do a few things with this. So the first thing is each of these students have given us a photo that they've made um, either during the program the NMFA program or since the NMF, NMFA program um, that they're proud of. And so we're going to talk about that, the photos that they um, have given us to share with you all. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about their experience as well as, you know, any questions that you all might have for them um, and any questions they have or you have for us. It's kind of just going to be an open forum, like a like a town hall, or something. Um, Jenna, Kirsten, is there anything you want to add in to that? Nope, that sounds good. I was just wondering whether I should pull up Facebook, but I guess Anna's on it. Yes, Anna is on it. I hope everyone can hear us okay. Um, if you can hear us, let us know. Oh, we have six people watching. <laughs> Facebook always hides these things for I'm scared I want to do it at everyone so bad but I'm so scared <laughs> just do it that people are start harassing me again she gets a big backlash whenever she does that I'm gonna do sometimes it sometimes people just need a little reminder that it's happening yeah if you don't use it every day it'll be fine there's <laughs> never been a moment where I'm like F that person they added me. They do that to me all the time. Like whatever. Like <laughs> regret what like you did. Don't regret what you day. don't do. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, not a big deal. No. Nope. These are um famous last words. Now Ashley's gonna go to bed. I, I, I did I did that comments. everyone. Please, <laughs> please don't come after me. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. I'm so scared. <laughs> my, my heart is in my butt right now. Yeah. <laughs> Odd. <laughs> Not your throat. It's Christmas. It's Hanukkah. <laughs> it's the holidays. Be nice. Yeah. No, but we thought this would be a fun little educational thing, and and hopefully people will like it. And those who don't, well, I mean that's on them. Post it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you know what? My favorite. The end of the Glenn and Doyle podcast. She's like, please <laughs> make sure to rate and review the podcast, especially if you liked it. And if you didn't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and I feel like that's, that's the most honest request for feedback. Just don't worry about it. If you don't like it, yeah. don't worry. If you don't about like it. it, that's okay too. Yeah. Um, Anna, if people start um getting wild in the comments about being at everyone, let me know so that, <laughs> that you can see my reaction live to how that works out. I will. <laughs> okay. So as more people are getting on, I am just going to try and open up. Okay. Photo mechanic, which I don't know if I'll. There we go. Now I did the thing. Okay. Um, while I'm doing this, Kirsten, Jenna, is there anything you want to say? I can't remember if you did. Yep, we're good. Okay. I'm sure lots will come up. I am sure as well. Okay. So trying to pull up these pictures real quick. Okay, maybe one thing I'll say is that it's delightful okay. to see a little bit of each class together. It's kind of fun. I it's know. It's like crossover because you guys don't know each other, but you actually. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. It's our world's it feels colliding. like you should know each other. It's our world's colliding. Yeah. Okay. One of my favorite things, world's colliding. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Not <laughs> everyone else loves it, but I love it. <laughs> I like it in specific context. Fair. <laughs> Sometimes. This one, I like it. Okay, so now that we have um, 42 people on, I just want to do my little intro again really quick to say, um, hi, I'm Ash Radatz. I didn't even say my own name right. I'm Ash Radatz. I am here my with, with my co-mentors and <laughs> friends, Jenna Schuldice and Kirsten Lewis. And we have some of our NMFA students 
um, joining us today so that we can show you some of their work and why their photos work and how they feel about their photos and all of that good stuff, as well as it's an open Q&A. So you can ask us anything, anything that comes to mind, whether it be about photography or business or um, crafts <laughs> or- Crafts? Oh, yeah. I'll feel any crafting question. Yes. <laughs> um, or if you have questions for the students about their experience in NMFA, um, that's short for No More Fucking Around, our year-long mentoring program that is about to start in January. Just drop them into the comments section here on Facebook, and we will get to them for you. Um, but to kick things off, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at, um, we asked each of these wonderful students to send us their a photo that they love that they've made while they were in the NMFA program or since they've completed the NMFA program. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk to them about the photo, find out why they love it, um, a little bit of their um, about their photographic voice, as well as we want to uh, give some feedback on why the photo works. So we hope you will enjoy our little presentation. Okay, now I have too many screens open. I need to give me a second and then I'm gonna share my screen. And um, Marissa, you wanted us to start with you, right? Because you have to go to a Christmas party. Hi everyone. Hi, oh, you do look great. You do. Look at how hot you look. <laughs> Hello. Hello, darling. You've seen me one hour ago. I was like dying, feeling so, so oh. sick. Then oh, I took- Oh no. Oh my makeup and I said let's go that's right <laughs> that's right she's not fucking around folks yeah <laughs> sometimes I forget because it's morning for me I forget that it's not morning for other people so when you look super fancy I'm like wow look at that right like do you get <laughs> do you get up and do that every day <laughs> yeah well this, I think that I should step it up a notch I know right okay so I'm gonna share my screen and there we go can you all see that mm -hmm. Good. Um, Marissa, this is the photo you went ahead and sent over to us and you won an award for this photo. I think this photo has been awarded a couple of times, hasn't it? Or maybe I'm wrong, but either way, it's an award-winning photo um, that you sent over to us to talk about. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this photo, why um, you love it and yeah, all of that good stuff. So, um... Uh, this program was really, really important for me um, because I, I was already a photographer for, I don't know, maybe eight years, or seven years when I started and I was feeling really stuck. I don't know. I didn't know where to go. So uh, these photos, uh, it's the symbol of, of the end of the program. And when I finally uh, did the jump and uh, uh, go through my gap and then I had a gap during the... <laughs> We talked about the gap of not, uh, my hands couldn't follow my brain. For, I, I learned so much things and uh, I still needed to practice, practice, practice and, and see everything I learned from this program. And I think this photo is, for, is from my, my, my daughter, Clara. This is from vacation. Uh, all of my other portfolio is for my clients. So this photo is special for me because I did it um, really in a slow down way, like you taught me well, <laughs> because I was always rushing to get the moments. I was always uh, trying to get um, uh, the moments before I start a program. And then I start, I, I, I learn with you how to slow down, how to have some purpose, how to really think about what I, I was trying to say. And um, this is a moment that changed my life, but it really be began when I started to mentoring with you. Oh. All of you. Yeah, really important for me. I, I'm really trying to decide whether to hold back on my sarcastic comment about the fact that when you were having like a gap and a messy time that you were still making work that fascinated me the whole way through. Right, <laughs> I know that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm like, wait, you had a gap? <laughs> <laughs> but I do know what you're talking about, obviously. But but the whole time was so fun to see, especially what you took of your daughter. Like, there's just so many photos that stick out to me. Um, yeah, watching the, you change, yeah. yeah, and become more yourself. 
It's interesting because I'm going to be, I'm going to be the asshole and be like, (laughs) um, Marisa, I think there is a huge difference between the work that you made prior to us working with you versus now. Like oh, yeah, that your I, work yeah. was strong in terms of it being consistent and technically sound, but I I definitely did not feel um, a particular perspective from you like I do now. Like I definitely feel like it's your work now versus before I felt like you were making work for other people. And now you you're making work actually for you, whether it's for you or other people, the work is much more in line with who you are as a person, as an artist and all of your life experiences. So I don't mean to be the jerk, but um, I definitely think there was a gap in terms of, I felt there was a disconnect between when I would work with you and talk to you about who you were and what you're drawn to versus the work you were making, it didn't feel an alignment. And now it does. I I agree with that hundred percent. Definitely see for me the missing for the gap is that I feel like when you when it clicked for you and mm-hmm. you like leaned fully in there was no going back that's mm-hmm. where like yeah. the, there's there's no gap in that if we look back at what your work looks like previously but prior <laughs> pre-NMFA um it it's completely different just yeah. completely different and now when you're like if I'm scrolling through um Instagram and your one of your photos comes up. I don't even have to see that it's your name. I know it's your work. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's Marissa. So, yeah, yeah you're but, you've definitely leaned in. Yeah, and and also I, I felt so, uh, uh, freedom. You gave me freedom to work in any kind of light conditions because until I met you, right. I was all working in safe in a safe space. And the first thing you taught you taught me was you have to. Re- yourself from that safe light you have to work in all kinds of light you have to embrace light and that was so so freeing for me and gave me like a superpower and today when I go to a day in the life shooting and I'm so happy that I'm really working with clients that pay me to do day in the life shooting I'm always feeling confident because I can work in any condition uh, in light condition and that I thank to you Uh oh It's true. Um, And you are quite the busy photographer. Like you're, (laughs) you're always booked out. Like we're at a point where I'm always telling Marissa, I'm like, all right, slow down, take less clients. Not so like you, you gotta just raise up the prices a little bit more. I mean, you, you you charge well, but you could charge even more because you're booked out constantly, which is incredible. Yes. We are so proud of you. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so proud and so honored to work with you. And I hope we will always be like kind of together in in this uh, life. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're connected. Now, go get sloppy drunk and enjoy the <laughs> holiday party. That's right. <laughs> That's thank you for joining us. Thank you. You can stay on if you want. We're not kicking you off, by the way. No, no. But we know that like you have somewhere to go. So thank you. Awesome. Anna, before I go on to the next photo, is there anything happening on the Facebook comments? No, people joining. But But no one's no one's screaming. No, 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 no no questions so far. Okay. I didn't put this on Instagram. Maybe I should do that too. Oh, you could do that. Um, they'll have to join our group. So Anna, you'll have to maybe check and see if there's requests, Facebook oh, okay. mm-hmm. member requests coming in. Okay. okay. We have, so we I have one here. Hold on. We have one for Marissa. Oh, there's a question. Yeah. Just came in. This is for Marissa. So I don't want to lose. Anna, why don't you read them? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I can read it. Okay. It says, uh, when it makes sense, I have marketing questions. That's awesome. You have so many clients. This is Erin McConnell, Marissa. How do you market without feeling like you have to write them a dissertation about what documentary family photography is? <laughs> of course, I have my elevator pitch where uh, in like 30 seconds, I pour out all my passion and all my love for this genre. And that I think it's my first approach to clients. 
when I meet them. But if they contact me without even ever saw me, I think my photos really speak for themselves. I think that's the way I capture my clients. It's show out what I really love about. And when people see that, they send me a message. They say, that's exactly what I want for me. I know I, I don't want anything posed. That, that, that's exactly. So if you are doing really strong work, of course, you have to talk with your clients. Of course, you have to, to, to like uh, get to, on a phone call and say, how is your day? How are you going to do this? But in the end of the day, it's your strong photos that will sell what you're trying to say. And it's what you're going to get your, where you're going to get your clients. I don't know if that's answering. I think it does. I think you made, yeah, you made good points. Um, Maria says we can put the link of her website up in the, in the chat. And just, oh, but I, I'm, um, what's that? I'm doing a, a refresh. Yes. Website refresh face left. Yes. Okay. Um, but we can put it up or your Instagram even, but I think one of the things that uh, Marissa really did well with, with this program um, was honing in on, and this is something we focus on a lot, is honing in on how she talks about her work um, and what it is and how she's impacting her clients through her work and what they're getting out of it. And like she said, working on that elevator pitch. So that clarity and being able to co concisely explain what you do and why you do it and why it's valuable to the people who are contacting you. And I think you've done amazing job with that on your website. Um, I'm sure you do it amazingly well in conversation um, because, you know, it, practice, right? Yes. There's You're another question <laughs> from the same person. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm with my phone and my <laughs> computer at the same time. Sorry. I'm she doing asked... it. Are we <laughs> sorry, I'm with my phone and my... Oh, oh. Is, that, is that you, Kirsten? Ignore me. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you do some non-documentary stuff too and try to convert them on the call or do they come to you already knowing about documentary? Oh, Anna, can you repeat? I'm sorry. Do you do some non-documentary stuff too and try yes. to convert them on the call? Yes, that's, that's the first step. It's, I already had a network of clients that always did lifestyle with me. And uh, since some years ago, whenever I was shooting with them, I was always talking about this new genre and maybe next year we have to try another way to do this. And I'm always speaking and talking about. And right now I'm not selling any lifestyle um, uh, shoots. So if they want to book with me, they have to do documentary. Of course, I do not uh, lifestyle with the fashion. I do some fashion with kids and that is lifestyle. I'll, there's no way to do that. Right. I would love to document. But with, uh, with families, right now, I say to them, I cannot do one hour and a half. You have to book me for more hours. And so they have like this uh, four or three year period that I was always talking about this and I was still doing lifestyle. But right now I cannot do it. It, it hurts me. It's like, it's like <laughs> I'm sick to do it. I cannot do it anymore. So I'm just doing what I love. Okay, um, there's a, another question. Where do you find your customers? Uh, marketing, social media, referral? I'm yeah, adding I, all customers. <laughs> I think like referral, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you work like um, with, if the clients love your work and you're going the extra mile, they will always talk about you to their friends and that's, uh, where I, I, I get most of my clients. It's from talking to each other and, and showing what I do. That's different kind of work that's, that is making here in Portugal. So I think like it's a natural way. But I think if I was starting now, I would definitely would pay social media to get more uh, on Instagram because I, I, right now Instagram is not selling almost anything. Yeah. Um, I was just going to mention really quick, Marissa, that was one of the big shifts that, I mean, when you first came on board in the program, 
the majority of your work was lifestyle other than what you were shooting of your kids, right? And um, seeing that you were able to basically convert all of your, a big majority of your client base into documentary lovers um, is, is great. It's amazing. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's one question, but I think it's for all of us or for the, all of you guys or for the instructions regarding um, composition and depth. Um, should I add it now or leave it till the end? We can answer it now real quick. Okay. So, sorry. Um, I would like to talk about the difficulty of dealing with the universe in three dimensions when taking a photo. You have to take into account the depth, the physical obstacles, etc. And I find that difficult. Very difficult to know if the harmony of the space um, will be respected. How to know if we are not too high, too low, too to the left. Um, I'm looking for courses, books, and I guess a little advice. Well, I can give you the course. The course is called <laughs> No More Backing <laughs> Around. <laughs> no more backing around. Um, go ahead, did, Jenna, Kirsten, did you wanna chime in? I'm sure everyone has an answer to this, but I'll tell yeah. you my, my go-to, which is that um, as much as I would love to put on a formula to this kind of thing, you can't. And so you have to work a lot and you have to interact with your work and you have to think about your work critically and decide what worked and what didn't. And the more you incorporate into your brain, the easier all those steps are going to be. But it's the experience that, that really uh, plays the biggest role here. You've just got to keep working and keep thinking about what you're trying to say. If you don't know what you're trying to say, all of these things are arbitrary, right? If you know what you want to say, you can make decisions based on uh, your message and your voice and your point of view. But without that, it's kind of like, what am I doing? So two things, one, you just got to keep working and two, you got to keep working on what you want to say, because then questions can get answered. Um, and you really have to interact with your work. Maybe I said three things there, um, but like a lot of practice is what makes a big difference here. Um, in terms of um, applying what Jenna just said, you can practice when you're in the field and you're seeing something happen, you can stop before you start shooting and ask yourself, what is it that is drawing me to stop? What is it that's making me want to pick up my camera? And identify that first. Um, if you have a child by themselves in a room and you're drawn to the fact that they are drawing on the walls and there's nobody else around to stop them, then the choice to shoot wide to exaggerate the story that they are alone in the room is going to lead you to that composition, which is to include the environment. If they're drawing something that you find very funny, ironic, interesting, sad, then the choice to get close and show what they're drawing is going to influence your composition. And you might want, might not want to shoot wide and instead you want to shoot close. So I'm just trying to take that another step yep. with what Jenna just said, which is know what it is that you're trying to say. Stop and ask yourself, why am I making this picture? That will help you deduct if you need to be close, if you need to be far, if you need to be um, high or low. Um, it's all going to be dependent on the story you have intention to tell. And so just to piggyback again on that uh, the, the next thing is some people go, I don't know in the field, right? They don't know what they're doing. And then you got to look at your contact sheet and be like, oh, what did I like about that kid in the room? What was it that was interesting to me? And try to reflect that story back to yourself. Or when you tell a story to somebody else about a session, what is it that you say about the kid or the family? Like, what are you, how are you describing it? And do your pictures match that? Um, and if you can try to make connections, if you can't figure it out in the field, try to make connections afterwards so that the next time you're in the field, it's a little bit easier to connect with your intentions. Jordan, are you on the edge of your seat by any chance? 
looks like Jordan might want to jump in. No, 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 oh, no. I just, I, I, I no, in a positive I was, way. Yeah. No, I was just, I'm not even just, uh, one of the, one of the most helpful things I found in terms of like looking back on how I've changed my process as part of the learning I've done in this course is real. It, it, number one, Kirsten said, you have to not be afraid of taking shitty photos to take really amazing photos. And I've really embraced that. The other thing is looking back at your work and then letting it go so that mm -hmm. Jenna took us through a process where she showed us the contact sheet from a session. And that was huge to be able to look at the work and see how she was approaching it and trying different angles. And then also see the final story that she chose from all those photos to tell. And both of that have really had an impact now on how I'm approaching thinking about my work and how I'm approaching shooting when I'm in the field. Right. And through those exercises that we're doing, you learn this critical skill of self critique. So it's always important to, you know, get critique from others and things like that. But it's really important to be able to self critique your work and look at it and say, okay, I wanted to say this is not even coming across and what I have here. And then being able to look at that and say, okay, next time in a situation like this, maybe I do need to change my perspective and go a bit higher to get that full story in or, you know, decide what I don't want in the frame. All of those things are, um, yeah, important skills to learn. In terms of classes and resources and things like that, like I said, there's NMFA, which basically teaches all of that. Um, but one of, I think another really great way is by um, finding photographer's work who you think does that really well and kind of you're not wanting to re replicate their work at all, but just having a look at, okay, where do I think they were standing when they made this photograph to get this story across? Do you uh, have also Sam Abel's book, Life of a Photograph? Mm -hmm. He goes through uh, a lot of pictures that he makes and talks about his process or why he chose them or why he made them. Yeah, that is a great book, actually. Any other questions pop up, Anna Banana? Okay. So I'll add another quick little thing on there too. When you were talking about self-critique, I think um, maybe this is relevant, maybe it's not, but it's coming out. Is uh, also understanding that self-critique does not mean how to be uh, make yourself feel shitty. <laughs> you know, like looking at critique completely differently. Like I think we have this idea that critique means people have got to like shit on you for you to be a better person uh, or a better photographer. But the truth is learning to critique your own work and other people's work in a proactive way. So figuring out how to solve problems in the field. That's what critique is about. It's not about coming in and just seeing like, okay, how hard am I myself going to be? How hard can this person be and me take it, right? Like, am I strong enough to take this hard critique? Um, and I just, that's one of my personal sort of annoyances with this concept or how maybe people have often do critique, but the idea is to solve problems and to improve and to tell better stories. And that's how we approach it, at least in our um, group. And how I like, I want people to talk to themselves in a proactive way. Yes. So, throw that out there. Love that. Okay. So we're going to go on to our next photograph and we'll do, oh, I guess I should share my screen. Jordan, are you ready to chat? Sounds good. Okay. So let's see. Can you see my screen? Yeah. This is your photograph. Why don't you tell us about it? Tell us why you chose it um, and like what it means to you, why you're proud of it, um, all of that good stuff. For sure. Right. Um, I think it's an award winner too, isn't it? Or some, it some is, yeah. It um, is. Yeah. We're always <laughs> proud of our students winning awards. So. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, this this won third place in the team category in the uh, in the most recent cycle of the Documentary Family Awards. So that was very Amazing. exciting. Yeah. Uh, and also, Carl was like losing it on this photograph. He loved oh. it so much. <laughs> it just plays. He like really went off about it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was very cool hearing everybody's critique on it and commentary. Um, so I actually like I had a hard time choosing a favorite one because I really feel like there was so much of like I said before how how much the way I'm thinking about my work and the way I'm approaching shooting has evolved as a result of being in this class. Um, this one I chose particularly because I I really feel like this this was a photo that I, I took very instinctually. And that was a, one of the things that we spent a lot of time talking about is like, like 
think about the process, but then also like stick with the moment, follow through, stick with your gut and see where that leads you. You know, once, once you've spent the time thinking about knowing what your work means and knowing what you want to say, then trust that and, 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 and trust in your work and what your message is. And I, I feel like this summed up for me because I'm so much of what I'm all about and what I'm talking to people about now in my own work and about my own work is I, I, I want people to embrace every part of their story of their family, not, not just and helping people understand to move beyond that lifestyle. Like we have to have the perfect outfits. We all have to be having fun and doing these perfect moments that we're really actually creating. What, what I am fascinated by and what I love is those moments that look beyond that and people are comfortable just being weird or doing these bizarre day-to-day things that that are a little out there but that that's what I love these are these little moments that make up your family's actual story and that's the kind of stuff I want to be capturing for people love that so I would say the shift in your work that I saw um from the beginning of the program to to now and current is again similar to Marissa's like leaning into what you're truly drawn to and um And having more of a confidence in that and like, yeah, a confidence in being like, yes, this is what I'm drawn to, drawn to. And therefore that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, the thing is, Jordan is hilarious. Yeah. You're one of the kindest, but also funny. And you just have this great like outlook on life and, and perception and care. So you're like funny with hair, you know? And so you (laughs) make these photographs of children that are hilarious hilarious but like in a specific Jordan way and you really can see that in your work um now it's so enjoyable it's just so enjoyable to view Um, I think for Jordan um I feel like just you in life you know what to take seriously and what not to and that is balanced in your body of work um there is a nice balance of really heartfelt, uh, sometimes almost uh, very sincere, but almost overlooked moments. And then you have these moments that are very straightforward, funny, um, the irony of real life moments. And I just think there's a nice balance between the two with you. And that has to do with who you are and your life experience, uh, which is really lovely. So the moral of the story is that you should be friends with Jordan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're awesome. Um, thank you. That's so lovely. <laughs> um, you know, and I think definitely, and Marina talked about having a, a gap. Uh, when I came into this program, I had a full on block. Like I, <laughs> I had been like, seriously, um, I, I have been doing this uh, photography part time for almost 16 years. And I, I didn't even have a website and and I'm now actively working on a website as a result of the encouragement I got in this program, which is huge for me. Um, I, I have been working away on a portfolio kind of here and there for three years before I joined this class and hadn't posted any of it. And I just finished a 30 day blitz of contents and I'm still going with it. I kept on, even though my 30 days is done and, and I've had really lovely responses from people and, um, and I wouldn't, I don't think I would have gotten there without the encouragement that I got as part of this class and just, just the level everybody, you know, like, I feel like it was a group class, but you're getting met on every level that you need. There's this wonderful group experience and we get to know the mentors and we get to know each other. And then there's accountability groups where we get to connect more with the other participants and we're moving forward with our work. You're getting one-on-ones with people. Like you just, you feel seen and heard on every level of learning that you should be doing to make forward progress. And I feel like no matter what level you're at, there's just such a huge benefit from that approach. Oh, thank you so much. Well, we were happy to have you. It was our pleasure. Thank you. (laughs) Anything, does anyone, uh uh-huh? Any questions? No? Okay. Any questions on the thing? No. Thank you so much, Jordan. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. You can, like I said, you can stay on or you can leave us if you must. Okay. Okay, Okay, let me see what's the next one. Hold on. Oh, nope. (laughs) Jenna knows I'm always really good with photo. Excuse me. (laughs) Jody. 
Hello. <laughs> Hi, my love. How are you? How are you? Okay. Yeah, thanks. I'm really excited to be sharing this photo because I hope I'm allowed to say this, but Jody's yeah. like, I haven't shared this photo with anyone before, but I just love it. So I want to know about why you love it. What was like the aha? Like, tell me okay. all that. There's, there's the, I chose the photo that felt like it summed up this series of this moment, but there's like, obviously a buildup before. And I remember just because the question it was so interesting, the question that was asked about space and dimension, because I was standing in a position, seeing this moment about to happen, and then going, oh, what's interesting about this? <laughs> like I started to go through the series of questions in the moment. This was what I called my everything clicked moment from the course, where I think if I were to name the greatest benefit I've had from this course, is the intuition that I have been taught to find within myself instead of, I'd say, I don't know, I don't know if it's appropriate to say mimicking because there's still an element of yourself when you're seeing really beautiful photography out there. But what I found most beneficial from this course is the intuition that was encouraged and cultivated by being in the course for a year. And then this was the moment where it was like, I had to like face what I'm typically uncomfortable with photographing and that is getting close. Um, <laughs> there's actually kind of a joke. <laughs> I had to the first thought when I saw the photo. <laughs> I had to anchor myself on the groom. I have my hand on his shoulder because I'm like, don't run away. <laughs> Stay in this moment and try to get this shot where everything hopefully can be read from the photograph. Um, so I, I had difficulty getting close and this was, a, you know, this was that moment where it was like I came together. This was a very, the dad is having a very emotional moment. So is the bride. And I was like, I just got to get in there and, and get this photo for them and not worry about taking up space. It was a bit to overcome. And I was really grateful that I had the course to kind of help me get to this place. So I tend to not take up a lot of space in general, and I'm learning to listen to my intuition, photograph from that space, and then be comfortable enough to put it out there. I've been a photographer for 10 years. I've shot a lot of weddings in that time period, but there's a confidence piece that's never really had a chance to be brought fully forward. And I think my greatest reward from being in the course was that cultivating my voice is going to be how I'm going to find that pride to put my work out there. So I haven't shown, I haven't shared this photo because I'm, I'm known for a very different style of photography. And I'm learning to like, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter where your photography art is at the moment. It matters that I think cultivating from that space of intuition, I think is where I want to go forward. So I'm a little behind from what I learned in the course, but I feel like I'm going to reap rewards from this course for years possibly even longer um just because that process I mean I've done lots of workshops and programs before and I've had incredible mentors I feel very very fortunate the people I've learned from but I feel like what I pulled from this course was like so much deeper than taking a photo and how to do it better it was connecting to this intuition that feels like I've never really had cultivated by any other mentor so if I were to label the best thing I picked up from this course that would be it that and really honest critique really really deeply honest critique that tends to rotate around in your head when you're working but I think it's a good thing um mm -hmm. I feel like I'm entering a very interesting phase I am a wedding photographer that's what I've labeled myself for a long time and shifting into just calling myself a photographer and knowing that what I'm really drawn to, hopefully, is just raw, real moments. Um, finding the beauty, finding the beauty, pretty much in things that are happening as they're unfolding, and not feeling like you need to stage it and make it pretty. But I also feel like there's there's lots of room to grow into other areas as well. So I, I'm I'm cutting back on my wedding work. I'm not entirely sure what's going to come forward, but I'm excited to enter the space and just get curious and creative and rest <laughs> I was gonna say and hopefully rest a bit because yeah. Jody's another one who has a banging business and um yeah 
Well, yeah. cutting back was really positive for you. Yes. Yeah. And an important step because you even came in knowing that it was too much. You're, you were shooting too much and you weren't connected to the, what you were doing in the same way. Right. And so that's a big, that's yeah, a big there, for you. There was an element of like, like it's, int- I love being a wedding photographer, but I think it has to be at a place where there's rest and opportunities when you're shooting, when these moments arise, like having the clarity to get in there and know how to Mm -hmm. act in that space in that moment, which is like, again, what I learned from the course. I think other workshops that I've taken have been really technical and like, you know, how to technically take a photograph, but also having mentors who are so emotionally sound that there's been tidbits of that that's been released over the years. But I don't know. So there's just, just this course felt like a huge awakening, a bit of a midlife, mid career crisis. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> just a big, a big shakeup, basically. And I'm like grateful for the shakeup because it did put a lot of things in perspective and questioning. And I'm like, for the first time in a long time, like, I haven't made, I, I've said this in the course, it's been a long time since I've made a photo that I like loved. And I know this photo isn't perfect, I, but I love this photo because it felt like such an accomplishment to be like, just get in there. <laughs> yeah. Space, it's okay. Holding on to the groom's <laughs> coattails. I am holding on to the groom. I, my hand is literally on the other side of the show. <laughs> I am. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just... Uh, before meeting up for this, I was mentoring someone I haven't worked with before. And one of the things that he asked me was, what advice do you have in terms of making pictures that are universally uh, appreciated or acknowledged? And uh, my answer was making photographs that aren't about what is happening Mm. or what people are doing, but actually how they feel in the moment that those things are happening. And I just feel like this is a really good example of that. This is not an outrageously loud picture. It's quite subtle in nature Mm -hmm. and the emotions, which also I have to be honest, I think is very, it's so geniusly Uh, all-encompassing of culture as well and this moment of a dad um me being a feminist like giving away his daughter I hate that but like um being okay up against that too (laughs) but (laughs) the idea of like putting trust in another man because I'm not a father and I don't know what that feels like to like be like, okay, another man is going to take care of my daughter in some way, take care of her heart, right? Like you mm-hmm. hope that I guess as a father, that, uh, the, the partner that your daughter chooses takes care of her heart, male, mm-hmm. female, non-binary, doesn't matter. But I think most dads like take that on. Like I'm, I'm in charge of taking care of my daughter's heart. And you can see that in him. There is complexity in his expression. It's not so clear, like, I feel really good about this, or I don't feel good about this. This is almost like a resolve and a trust in mm-hmm. the exchange of that, which I think is so lovely in terms of expression. And the fact that the bride's face is turned away, I think, says everything mm-hmm. uh, about giving in to that and trusting your father uh in the decision he is making um to f- wholeheartedly uh accept this uh and trust this process. So I just think it's a really good example of subtle storytelling that has lots of complexity without it being really loud or complicated. And there is much power and beauty in that as there is in very loud and obvious and dynamic stories as well. This I think is harder to do. And the fact that this is outside of what your, what your wheelhouse was, is this beauty um, in moving forward in the commitment to telling real stories. 
yeah, that's, that's what this, this kind of felt like, like, I haven't shared it, not because I just like, how do I, how do I word how it just was that moment where it was like, God, I'm so lucky to do this for a living, you know, Mm -hmm. like it was that moment of like, wow, this is such a special career. And uh, I just haven't felt that for a really long time. And it's like, kind of vulnerable to put that out there. Like we forget like, that what caption <laughs> could I possibly give this photo in this yeah. moment yeah, yeah. and yeah, I just felt like I was like maybe it's okay that sometimes there's photos that you take that you hold so close to your heart that maybe they don't have to be you know put out there um I will interject and be like no this yeah. is the <laughs> first you want to be making so you need to put it out there yeah, yeah. It, doesn't yeah. Have, it doesn't have to have a complicated like caption it could be just this this is what i witness and this is what i want to make pictures of and it could be as simple as that yeah okay what what you're looking for wordy i'm such a wordy person like i just uh, that's why you're gonna be a writer (sighs) jerry yes yeah that also that can be your your caption i'm usually so wordy but there are no words (laughs) yeah Yeah. um or too many is what I come up against. I think I can relate to how you're feeling. But Jody, what what you're um, kind of searching for is that um, you share this work. I, I have to uh, encourage also what Kirsten said. Please share this work. <laughs> I um, I share will. everything you love, <laughs> but also, yeah. but um, maybe what you're finding is you're coming at a place where um, it doesn't matter whether everybody in the world agrees with you that this is the best photo you ever made. You can hold photos really precious in your heart. Yeah. Um, and whether people get that exact, the amount of weight it was for you in a personal way, maybe not, right? Because without the words, you might not know that, but you can share. And um, even if it doesn't get the reaction, the point is you made this and you love it. And it means so much to you. And it means so much yeah. to them. And that's, there's joy in that in itself. Um, totally. It's like not building our confidence on, um, uh, outside feedback in a superficial way, which is why we all don't make photos. We, not, in the beginning, we're not, we're not, um, people have a hard time trusting their intuition because we're so worried about what people will say about it, right? That we don't look about, what do I have to say about this? Am I proud of this image? Oh, How yeah. do I get there? Um, Definitely. I don't, I don't say this very often, but I'm like super proud of this photo. That's yeah. just- <laughs> yeah. I love Jeffy. that. Yeah, just share it. Just share it is what I think. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm so proud of this photo in this moment. Um, um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just oh god, sign up for the course. <laughs> <laughs> you will. What about the business side, Jody? Car. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the well, business side, oh yeah. Do you want me to? Well, you can give your your opinion because you were already had pretty big in business yes but oddly enough I feel that one of I pulled a lot from the business side of things because as the tie in with photography and your photographic voice I think the business side of it has taught me the value of how important it is to take care of that voice and like space out how much you necessarily push that voice out there but um learning how to price appropriately has has been a big component that's come out of this. And then also I'm taking um, quite a, a, quite a break, I would say in comparison to years I've been working in the past. And my intention is to actually redo the whole business section of the course and go at it with like as honest intention as possible to like follow all of the steps, which I'm pretty excited to actually go through and do. Cause I, when I started the course, um, As we all know, we had a pandemic, a lot of wedding photographers and a lot of postponements, and they all kind of bottlenecked at the exact same time I started this course. So it was like pretty intense to to be in a course learning material that requires, I would say, a lot of your attention. Like you need to be really attentive on the business side of things. It's a lot of material to go through, but it's also meticulous on purpose because there's not a lot of places I've learned that particular side of the photography world and business. And um, a lot of it felt like too much to keep up with how much shooting was happening. But then as I'm near the end of that spell, um, I'm really excited to go back pay attention to that space because my voice 
and my intention of what I want to photograph has clearly shifted. Um, and it's going to be interesting to go through that process and apply what has shifted and changed through the business side of the course. And see. I'll bring be that forward. Like I, I see that photo being shared on a website, potentially even in a blog, talking about like that moment. I can't help. I know I could put that photo out there with a really short caption, but I feel like I want to build on why that moment felt really important to be a part of. And then encourage that to be the voice that I want to speak from when I'm photographing people's weddings going forward. Honest, moment driven, learning to be quiet. <laughs> Holding <laughs> on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, that groom was like, we had a great bond. <laughs> Solid bond. He was okay with me touching him. <laughs> but of course he was. Um, yeah, just learning to like, yeah, apply because uh, it was a lot to learn. And I was already feeling like business life was giving me a lot of lessons um, post COVID. So in one regard, I was so grateful to be in that space because it was reflective for the current moment I was in. But now I'm excited to go back and apply it. And well, let me know when you grow. when if you need help as you're going through. I'm sure you will hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, actually, I changed, I, like my, I changed my email address. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I just have to say, as a female photographer, I've, I've had lots of instructors, but it's been amazing to learn from women. Um, I, I know that's a little on the gender, gendered side of commentary, but it's been amazing to, yeah, just be in a space that's empowered in that way. Thanks. Um, I want to make a little like uh, composition comment. Um, oh, oh, do you want boy. me to pull it up again? Hold on. No, not about oh, the no. photo. No, I no, knew no, that. no, you, Jody. No, not about the photo. Relax. Everybody oh. relax. It's not what you think. Relax. <laughs> what, Jill and Rachel. What I was going to say is one of the like, you know, Kirsten said about when she gave generic advice or like how, what generic meaning her general advice for going forward or when somebody asked for it. One of the things you hear about all the time is like, just get close, get close, get close. Um, that's like good photography advice. And it's not wrong. But um, it doesn't really get at why you're having trouble not getting close or why you're having trouble backing up. And the, the, tr the reason why you're having trouble getting close is so personal. <laughs> it's so personal. It's a reflective of how you feel in a space. And so how you compose and how you pay attention to what's going on around you and how you decide what you're photographing is so personal. It's not a thing you can just tell somebody, right? And so that's what's mm -hmm. kind of fun about working with you all or what's been fun. And like, when you say that you feel more intuitive, it makes me just absolutely thrilled to be honest. It's because that, that's the point. Like the, when you're connected to your intuition, then you can make the right decisions to make a photograph that does reflect your voice. And you do know how to move close when there's, when you've addressed why getting close is tough or what's actually holding you back in the first place. I know a few of you can relate to this, uh, even on this screen here from getting close and there's something else that's holding you back it's not that you're afraid to compose right um and so I just kind of love that you had that breakthrough mm -hmm. uh, yeah and it, yeah, just, it was I I literally like I I logged it in because that wedding happened in June and I logged that as like oh where it all clicked hmm. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> you need to print it out and hang it up for yeah. you by your computer <laughs> like as the reminder mm -hmm. yeah absolutely you should print it yes absolutely you should be looking at that um, it, Jordan um I think has a, a relevant comment you said you wanted to add I just didn't want to interrupt Jody, but I just I think speaking kind of in in alongside what she's saying and also just from chatting with other people who were in our cycle of the course is that so many of us had an awakening like what Jody was talking about because it is such a safe space and 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 just you know like I I've participated in like you know random critique times on Facebook groups where you just like you put in your very best of the best photo and you hope they don't tear it to shit um whereas here I regularly most of the work that I submitted was pictures that I wasn't super happy with and I wanted to figure out why and I felt completely safe to do that and and I learned so much from that process and learned so much from watching other people submit their work as well same that had the exact same moment happen and one of my favorite parts of the critique was like where you could be 
to or where you could be and how you could express that voice differently. I, I'm, I'm kicking myself because I should have looked this up before, but there was a quote, uh, Kirsten, feel free to jump in if you were, and if you don't remember, don't worry about it. But there was like something about when taking a photograph, like how to not just take the photograph as like, like you want to be brought in to the photograph. Like for some reason that I put it on my whiteboard because it was like, rather oh. than taking a yeah, thank you. Please help. Cause I'm like well, been trying to remember it. It was, but it was like, don't take a I don't photograph. Know, like, like I don't know watching. what the exact quote is. I come up with so many. You know. <laughs> Pull out the old book of cursing quotes. <laughs> and then there's me, Jenna, trying to pronounce words. <laughs> yeah. hey, I've got my undiscovered book of quotes. No one knows about them. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was fitting because it was like it was like don't take a picture of like what, what what's happening. Like it's no, not I, even, it's, so yeah, go ahead. The idea is I don't generally I don't want to see pictures of like what is happening from the outside. Yeah. Um, the beauty and the gift that we have as photographers is that we can make photos from points of view that we don't normally experience life from. That's it. And so, and what I mean by that is I just said this in uh, my last mentoring session, like, like we're all having a conversation, but also we're also from a particular distance from our computer, right? It's basically the same distance that we would have a conversation. I'm not going to have a conversation like this with Jody, where I'm this close to her face. I mean, maybe, but probably not. Right. And we the same. We try it. <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone want to move in? <laughs> the same is from like, I'm not going to have a, a conversation with you from like 20 feet away, more than likely. We're going to, we're going to be in this comfort zone of like three to six feet, which sometimes that's great. We're like, I don't think you're going to be laying down. And I'm like, <laughs> unless we have a different relationship, I don't think that we're going to be having this conversation for me above you. Right. But the beauty of being a photographer is that we get to give this gift to the viewer of experiencing life from places where we don't normally experience life from. And sometimes that is the three to six feet, but you should challenge yourself to tell the stories from a different point of view because we have this beautiful gift to do so. Is that what you're referring to? Like that? Yeah, theory? well, and, yeah. and like submitting photos where you know you didn't quite get it, but having like a voice outside of you to be like, well, what if you stood here? And well, why do you feel it? like, the yeah. why oh my god there's a lot of whys <laughs> but the the space to be able to share something that you know you didn't quite hit but then being able to share it and get like a per perspective from a group of where you could be to have it be better and then it's interesting because I think I'm I'm six months out from when the course ended that it's like it's almost like I'm in a Zoom conference in my head all the time now. So it's like, where could you be to do this better? But then the best, I'd say my most favorite component from the course were the questions, like the series of questions that came from Jenna that, um, I mean, all of us had questions, sorry, everybody had questions, but in particular there were, it's like the psychology of shooting, which I don't feel like has really been, I've been exposed to before. And I love psychology so much. Um, that that perspective felt like one of those valuable nuggets that will be in my kit, like every other piece of equipment I work with from now on. Like it's like a whole new toolkit to pull from. Mm. I don't know if there's any questions. I feel like I just babbled. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's wonderful. Questions. Um, let me go back. Um, I'm at the stage of immersing myself in learning and gaining more experience in documentary family photography. I'm reaching out to some families and offering my services for free so I can just keep practicing and testing and finding my perspective. I'm wondering if any of you felt a shift when you felt ready to share with the world that this is what you do offer. This is more of a general question. <laughs> Probably for students, I guess, hey? I 
I can say. For me, it was not a shift. I started pretty much, I was doing travel photography before. And um, yeah, I thought I would be a travel photographer until I discovered the creative life um, courses of Kirsten. <laughs> and I did them all. But it's a complete different experience to do an online course and actually do a mentoring program where you your your work is seen and critiqued and this critique helps you to understand um what is it that your photograph why maybe your photographs are working for you and you like them but maybe sometimes they are not working for the general public what i mean for, with this is in the beginning of this course i was doing a lot of shot at photos and I didn't, I didn't get uh, because I liked them. And I said, what am I doing wrong? And in the end, I was not doing nothing wrong. I liked the photos, but they, they could go much more beyond that. And this was encouraged by all the mentors and um, Kirsten in particular, but all of them. And when I start putting, and it was constantly a message of, Pay attention to the work you put out there. Pay attention to the work you put out there. If you want to attract the, your ideal clients, the work you put out there matters a lot. So for me, from the beginning, the moment I decided to, 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 to become a full-time photographer, documentary family photographer, and the moment I decided to put my work out there was all about thinking on my ideal client who am i who do i want to attract and um today i can say clients come to me and i would say i work pretty much with ideal clients because the ones that come to me they come not because of portraits not because of lifestyle. They come because they are attracted for my documentary work. They, they don't know even, sometimes they, they talk to me, I really like your photo. They don't even know why they like them, but there's something about the message and about the photos I, I, and the work I, I put out there that connects with them. And this is what makes them look for me. And then obviously there's always a conversation, but I think it's all about the shift comes with the work and this was was taught to me by these three beautiful ladies here <laughs> but and it was in, in, engraved in my brain all the time I, I put my work out there and it's it really works it's about the work you put out there and if you want to make the shift just post the work you connect you resonate and you you want to attract clients with this is this is my experience from from it and, and what I can say answering this question I don't know I hope it answered somehow a little bit I think you did great answering that I just can I also to... in... oh, oh go ahead no you go <laughs> go bathrobe which I love you <laughs> in your bed it's my snuggie <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing in Germany it's like snowing I know go okay so what I was going to say was um, what's really amazing with the way that we teach about voice and branding in this program, it's not like any um, other course or anything like that in particular that is out there because it's our own kind of method, I guess you would say. And so when Anna's talking about ideal clients, the idea behind ideal clients is they're not going to be attracted to you because you've been like, oh, I want to show up in these rich areas or this, that, or the other. It's because you've honed in on your voice. You've gotten really clear on what you want to say with your photographs and automatically those clients are, it's going to resonate with them and they're going to want that too. Um, no matter where they live, you know, what they do for a living, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, what's really amazing about it is that when you start making this work that quote unquote clicks with you and that you feel proud of and that you start putting out into the world you're like I want to work with people who want this type of work rather than the other way around which is what is typically taught of okay let's look at our ideal client what do they want to see so it's completely the opposite is what you're learning here and it's this whole process that we take you 
through from the inside out rather than the outside in. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Go ahead, Beanie. <laughs> beanie. Beanie and bathrobe. That's <laughs> if we were in the military, that would be our names, Beanie that's and bathrobe, it. which it. I love. Um, no, the one thing I was gonna say about Anna and um it's just like in the forefront of my mind right now is everybody in the last two cycles of this class have been incredibly trusting of our process. Well, almost everybody. But there's something very particular about Anna that I want to mention. And is that she, the vulnerability that she was willing to share both in conversation, but more so in visual conversation with her personal projects in, in an area of photography she has never done before, I believe opened up um, a different space for you in terms of the work that you make now. Because like Marisa, the work you, you were making before versus the work you're making now is very different. And I think that comes from you 100% trusting the process of of us encouraging and nurturing vulnerability. And um, it's scary. Uh, vulnerability is really scary. And it's even more scary when we add art to it because it's like standing out in front of the world naked and allowing or giving the world permission to have any sort of opinion or judgment about us. But I really feel and see a correlation between the vulnerability work that you did interpersonally and giving yourself permission to weave that in to your, to your client work, to your family work that has made all the difference. And I don't care what anybody says and critiques about it, I still stand firm. And whatever it is that you do, you will get out of it what you put into it. And this cl class is not an exception. Uh, Ash and Jenna and myself are there to meet you 150% of the way and push you. And as long as you're willing to trust our process, um, there is great personal and professional reward uh, with this particular program. So I just wanted to say that. I agree. Another Can I question. sign? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was I was just pulling up. Anna had uh, sent us three photos. Um, and so I was just kind of scrolling through them. I'm still learning how to decide for one. Sorry. I still no, no, it's so <laughs> and they're all, struggle. Again, award winners. <laughs> um <clears throat> Yeah. Is there anything in particular you wanted to say about these photos, Anna? Or yeah, the three of them were made together with the whole process that you teach me in the class about um, telling the story without telling the story. So I'm talking about uh, the one with the, the girl that has the bucket. It's about finding a different way of telling the story or a more indirect way to tell the story frame it in an interesting way, uh, telling the story in an interesting way, but without being completely obvious and um, seeing, seeing it from a different point of view. Um, then the one with the, with the little pigs is about finding that element of exception and that sub sub the, the subtle moments that um I like sometimes to just to be subtle in in the photographs I take sometimes there's a very so, subtle something happening that I just find interesting and I'm drawn to it and this is something that you all of this it was encouraged all the time to embrace and this is constant you constantly encourage us to to embrace our gut and our feeling and, and how we, we feel about the moment, about something. And this and the one, the, the, the last one, the one when that is actually my husband and my son, when my son was 
getting potty trained. Um, it's about not giving up. It's about shooting through and and um, being persistent because some, even if you get a photo that you think it's good, do not ditch or abort the situation until the moment is, is happening. And this is a great example of it. Actually, this photo, I just want to tell a little bit the backstory of it because they started playing with these binoculars in the living room. And this was still in the year where we were in the course. And I always had my camera, always easy to, to grab. And, um, and they were playing in the living room and I was sitting, observing them and finding them super cute, making photos in my brain, but being too lazy to pick up my camera <laughs> and go shoot. <laughs> But this is when I say this, this was a transformation in me is because now I see the world in frames. So basically I'm observing moments and I'm doing pictures in my brain. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. I was already doing the pictures in my brain. And then all of a sudden my son says, Papa, Kaka. And they both run to the toilet. And I just run to pick up my camera because I said, I believe something good is going to happen right now that it, I really cannot miss. And that's how this photo happened. Me believing in my instinct, me preparing my brain already while they were playing with it in the living room and being persistent and not giving up and going for it. And, and here it is. And I love this photo. Obviously, I have a, an emotional connection with it because it's my son, because it's my husband, because it's my family. But independently on this, this is something that is applied in my, in my client work also, um, which is feeling it in my soul and, and believing in it. And you gave me this. This workshop for me was truly the foundation to start my full-time, to have the courage to start my full-time business. Actually, I quit my, my previous job while I was in the, in the, in the course which was a huge decision for me, was really a big decision for me. Um, I did that step and this was photography business was my plan B. After this, I had no plan C. So I embraced this course like a sponge because I said either is this or is this, I have no other option. And I, I, absor I absorb like all the learning and everything like, really truly like a sponge and maybe that's why for me this course is such a life changing because you three ladies create a truly solid foundation for me to start to, to have the courage and to start my full-time business and and yeah I also believe because I, I'm starting a little bit later in my age, it's not that I consider myself old, but I felt I don't have the same time as a 28 year old person or a younger person. I need to, to hurry up myself a little bit more if I want this to succeed or if I want to, to, to really leave from photography, I need to definitely make a decision for myself and I need to, to, to work hard in order to, to be at a place where I can feel comfortable calling myself a photographer. And you helped me with that. And having three mentors, I think it was a, a great thing because you don't send messages con contradictory to, to each other. You complement each other in your, in your learning. So every message we receive from each of you, it's complementing the other one. And, and we breed all this knowledge, all this critique and, um, and, I always say to everybody that asks me about the course that it's a, a life-changing professional about your professional work as a photographer, but also inner journey, because as the other students also already said, it's you help us to ask the right questions to ourselves. Ask yourself the question, why is it interesting? Why am I drawn to this? And I keep questioning. Today, I keep questioning it myself. I did other courses after the, the NMFA uh, with really good mentors, but if it wouldn't be for this course, I wouldn't even have as much profit of the other courses as I had, because this one was the true foundation in order to, to keep 
learning more and more on other one on other courses that I already did and and Jenna said to me um because I felt sometimes exhausted and drained because of all this inner self-reflection and inner vulnerability and all this inner journey. And Jenna said something to me in one of 101 that I never forgot. She told me something like this. It's not exact words, but <laughs> no one can have such a, a shift and a change and a growth in the work if together with it doesn't come a huge change and inner self-reflection and deep connection with yourself. So all your feelings are normal because you can only, you can only grow your work if you, all, if you do that inner work. So it's something like this, I'm not putting in, in the right words, but these words just clicked in my brain and it makes so much sense and it's so true. And the journey continues. It's not, no, NMFA was not the end. It's, it's a, it gives you the tools for you to continue looking at your work and seeing what you produce. And I'm doing some conceptual work that comes inspired by my documentary work because I question it. Why am I so connected with this photo? And sometimes the photo not even, is not even the most popular photo I do, but I connect with it. And questioning myself about my own work helps me to understand my true voice and who I, want, who I am as a person and as a photographer. And how do I want to produce in a conceptual way, different kind of work. So yeah. I cannot say thank you enough to all of you because I'm forever grateful. And I totally recommend this course 100, 200%. It was my experience and it was huge and it's huge still today. And it will continue to be huge because the tools were given by you. The foundation was there, was given by you. And that's it. Oh, don't make us cry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm like I mean, tearing up. That I'm being cool. honest. <laughs> we, we are so proud of you. Seriously. Yeah. Um, oh, my son, real life. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, gotta go. <laughs> okay, I'll give you water. Come here. Come here. I want to see him. Okay, I'll Are go. You? Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. over there. Thank you yeah, so much. It's for quite late. Sharing. Sorry. No, he can, he can, uh, mama is coming, Nicholas. Okay, five minutes and I'll come, okay? <laughs> so cute. It's okay, cute. five minutes is too long. So can you give me five minutes? Because yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much him. for sharing. I'm sorry, so I'll come back. No problem. Okay, I, I have a comment for her that I'll wait till she comes back. Uh, because just remind me to come back to her. Um, this is a great opportunity to talk about the fact that your children are allowed to interrupt your Zoom and having three mothers as mentors means we don't give a shit. That's right. <laughs> no one um, should, I'm just saying. It's particularly normal <laughs> to understand that uh, real life is a part of this. So <laughs> I want to, there's a question that came on here from Lauren that says, I'm wondering if anyone has done this done or is doing this course has also done either of Chuck and Anna Marrow's courses. This seems like a great fit for after his CBDI and closing the gap. Would love to hear from someone who's done both. I'm seriously considering joining this one in 2023. Um, you should definitely join this one in 2023. I can only tell you, and Jen, maybe you can speak on this because, um, crap, wait, I gotta find you guys. I just, there we go. I had too many uh, windows up. Um, I know Mark has talked about this in our advanced mentoring that he was saying that he found that the combination of the two, um, of having this and then going to, um, creating deeper docu documentary Im imagery or vice versa, that the combination was like dynamite for him. He said it was like, like mind explosion that it was amazing and that we should make some kind of roadmap that shows people like these are the courses you should take if you want to be doing everything you want to be doing with your work and your business so right something along those lines Jen 
you can yeah yes like yes and Aaron too oh right Aaron Aaron was in the class too because I was I was so close to taking the course um Chuck's course last year but then I I couldn't quit you guys. <laughs> I can't quit you. I'm like, what am I? I'm, it's almost three years now I've been with you guys. We love but, you. Um, I know, but I, 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 um, I love you too. But they, I, they couldn't say enough good things about that course, but also it's dovetailing our foundation, our, what they learned and what you all helped us with. Right. That it was, it was a great course, but There's it was something about the mixture of the two. Yes. Like that alone wouldn't have um, been the same. Right. Without taking both classes. Right. That, that I think Mark put it that he wouldn't have gotten as much out of creating deeper documentary imagery if he hadn't taken this first. But I think it's kind of similar to what Anna, actually Anna did just say that, that she felt that having what she learned through this, she was able to get so much more out of any other workshop or program that she's done because of um, this foundation behind it. And I think when we look at foundation, we're not just looking at like, oh, it's the foundations of photography, like not of, not of that. It's the foundation of finding, again, clarity in your voice. And once you have that, then you can go on to make even better and better and better photographs and um, work. <clears throat> My understanding also Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I, go ahead and um, I was going to say that um, this, I think finding your intuition when making photography doesn't have to come at a particular stage either. Like you don't have to be so far in your career that now you, now you found your intuition. If you learn to find your intuition at the beginning, well, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, and it, like, I think it can move a little faster for you in that case. There's no stage I think that you have to be at in terms of um, taking what we have to offer. I just wanted to share that. Go ahead, Kirsten. I was just going to say my understanding with Chuck is that he's very much in alignment with uh, our philosophies on storytelling and journalism and um, documentary work. And I don't, I don't anticipate or imagine that there's a lot of co uh, conflict of interest uh, in terms of materials. I think that they probably both complement each other ideologies and approaches and just thoughts on photography in general is that he's uh his work is very much in line with what j all three of us make and so it would make sense to me that they complement one another whether you take one before the other uh or one years after the other i can only imagine that each one helps uh nurture and grow what you've learned in the other class yeah that's what i've heard can I Jody, did say, you say sorry? Decision? Can I just say sorry because I was interrupted? Can I just say that the fact that it's one year long, I I also find that it's really good for you to have the time to process the information and and go through it and um, absorb and at the same time experiment. And I feel the one year time for me personally was was really also really important compared with other courses that were a little bit shorter. Um, that's why I say it was the foundation, probably also because it was such a long um, workshop. Yeah, yeah, this was the only thing I wanted to add, sorry. Jenna, I feel like you had something to say to Anna after she got back. Yeah, oh, I did. But Jody, is your, your comment relevant to oh, right now? Because I can come back to mine. It's not, it's not relevant to the course that's in question. I was just going to make a comment on intuition. I'm like how it changes, how like your intuition when you start out being a photographer and starting a particular business, how that intuition well, it evolves. It evolves. It evolves. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, like yeah. I would say, just because I don't think you need to be at the beginning of your career to benefit from this course, not in the slightest. I feel like... <laughs> wherever you are when you start your business, these are the foundation of what you're learning about intuition and you know channeling it through your creative arts. This is the type of course that would benefit like a very long, wide range of careers for how long you've been a photographer. Because yeah. um, I started out with a very different genre or not genre, that's not the right word, um, just a different imagination of what I wanted to create. 
and it's evolving, <laughs> it's shifting. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. if you're at a point where you're questioning or at a place where things might be feeling a bit stuck or unsure, like to get unstuck, it like I feel like this course is very good at helping you figure out how to navigate that stuckness mm -hmm. and but shift that, into something or evolve into something different. Yeah, that's actually a question we get quite a bit when people are wanting to sign up. It's like, oh, is this for, for beginners or someone who's been in business for 20 years? And it's like for all, because it is all about that. It's either, you know, finding your roots and going from anyone who's taken it and has been in business for 10 years has said, oh, I wish I would have found this sooner. And, <laughs> and anyone who um, is just going into business and like doing it or like, thank God I found this, right? This yeah. problem. So um, we get feedback um, from both ends and we have students across the, the spectrum and across um, different genres. So again, Jody came in as a prominent, pro, prom, yep, prominent, 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 yeah. prominent. No, pro prominently, prominently, predominantly, predominantly, predominantly. Um, if you'd like to add it to my quote book, <laughs> um, predominantly a wedding photographer, right? Um, and some people come in and like, are like, oh, I'm a documentary family photographer. And then we get partway through the course and they're like, you know what? I'm not. And that's okay. Like our job is to help you go along and realize that like, no, I'm actually a conceptual fine, fine artist. Like I'm all these things. We've had a vast number of students figure out certain things um, partway through the course. And it's our job as your mentors to um, help encourage that and to nurture that, uh, what you found in yourself. I was mm -hmm. going to make that disclaimer that happens a lot working with me in particular, <laughs> where people come in working with me, thinking they're one type of photographer and leave exiting a course, a completely different type of photographer. <laughs> so just a, a warning. It's, <laughs> but it's whatever you, I mean, it's whatever you realize, like feels good. And like, it found like, you know, it finds you. It's that intuition that we're talking about, that clarity. Um, but also, I kind of like enjoyed the label dropping a bit in mm -hmm. the course as well. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, no you don't label. have to be like, no label. Particular... You don't have to label yourself. Yeah. You don't have, I really enjoy like just saying I'm a photographer today, then mm -hmm. labeling yes. it I'm a wedding photographer. Like, I can yeah. do more than one thing. And mm -hmm. um, I thought that was just like really encouraging that yeah you don't you, yeah. you don't have to join the course with the intention of like being business motivated you could be join the the course as a photographer wanting to expand and grow your skills as a photographer and then wherever dire whatever direction it leads you towards yeah. you're, you're being sent out with an arsenal of options to start leaning into I think now yeah. uh, your most important tool is your intuition Right. Yeah. And that holds true even for the business portion is because, you know, we oh, do this. Yeah. Work. <laughs> What's that? that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do this work and some people realize like, oh, shit, I, I don't want a business like after realizing. But the work that they're putting behind it and figuring out these um, statements they're making about the type of work that they're or statements, you know, what about the work that they're making, excuse me, um, become artist statements. And um, they can be used in other settings. So it's, it doesn't mean like, oh, well, I already, I did this course and it taught me about business. So I have to have a business. You can still utilize what you learned from the business side and like putting yourself out there, getting yourself in front of people, the types of people you want to be in front of, whether that be clients or editors or, um, you know, curators for exhibits, whatever it is, um, and utilizing what all of the information you get and guiding yourself with our help there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to pull up Raquel's photo. Really okay. Let me just quickly, I was going to say just about Anna really quick. Go ahead. Um, because what we talked about was all quite deep with her, but I wanted to share like something she said really quickly was, um, and I loved it. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> you said that looking at the work you're already making and not looking at it as wrong, but looking at it when it doesn't resonate with other people, but actually just one of the things we do is look at the work that you're already making and go, why are you making that? And what are you drawn to? And what is it that you love about it? Like you were saying, Anna, but maybe it's not resonating with everyone just yet. It doesn't mean it's, you're approaching everything wrong, right? There's something really beautiful in that, in what we're drawn to, especially if your work is intuitive from the beginning. But I wanted to say about Anna is that you're so loving, like you're, 
Mm -hmm. one of the most loving people. Um, when you speak about your son, I mean, we all like our kids and I think I'm a high up on, on loving children, but like on the scale, but like when you speak the word son, the actual sunshine flies out of your ass and, and <laughs> sprinkles the world, <laughs> you know, like th the way that you speak about your child is just fucking glorious to me. <laughs> and your photos were that way too. You were, you were like, so focused on one little thing, right. And your early work, which is wildly different than your current work is so like focused on all these things that you loved about him. And then what we did is instead of saying like, oh, this is wrong, we learned and you learned how to create context and take those subtle moments and put them in a wider context and tell us a, a story with them so that we could also be drawn into the emotion and what brought you there. Um, and I just love that. Like, I love <laughs> looking true. yeah, at, at what you're drawn to, even if the photo isn't resonating with other people, you know, like, it's like looking at yourself. It's important to be inspired by yourself. Where so so much of traditional education is about here's how to emulate this, and here's how the good people do it, and this is what your work should look like. But actually, it's a lot better just to be inspired by yourself. <laughs> and I loved watching that happen for you. It's just a good example um, Thank you. of how you can do that. I mean, Jody, what Jody talked about exemplified how getting close is not really just about getting close. And that was for the you, opposite. It's, well, you're so close. Yeah, you're right. You're the exact opposite. You're so close, <laughs> adorably close <laughs> uh, that we couldn't tell about anything else, right? There's no other, but, but that was like, you were, you were obviously, it was speaking to you. And so we just harnessed what spoke to you. Um, and now you've harnessed that in such a brilliant way. And your work is, is incredible. And there's, uh, it's amazing the difference, but I just wanted to share that. Um, Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, Raquel, you ready? Yes. Hello, my love. Okay. So, so uh, I bring this photo because I, I think it's a changing point for me. Not only because you give me strength and push out of my comfort zone to shoot my family. This is my mom and my brother, and I never uh, shoot them. And with you and with your uh tips i i give co i have courage to to shoot them and it was so so good for me in the first time it was so difficult because it's out of my comfort zone but then it was so so grateful and so and push out also my creativity um also i think this program allow me to know uh which is my vision my own vision because uh not not all all other people has this vision so each of us has our own vision and it, it's so important to discover that and with you i finally uh see and know which is my vision so thanks so much for that um and i think also this program is not just about photography, but it's about life. Uh, you teach us uh, so much about photography, but I think uh, after this course, I I'm a better also I'm also I'm a better person. Um, and I, I just have to say, Raquel. I mean, Raquel's vision is so clear and beautiful, and I'm always like encouraging people to get her autograph now because <laughs> absolutely, I just you're true. You're so it is young. true. Yeah, and brilliant. Um, but like what I, I mean, you were, so Raquel was in the pandemic. So our first course was in 2020. And, yeah. and a lot of people are stuck with their young children. So they're photographing their young children. And Raquel was stuck with adults. I mean, not stuck because you love your family, but like <laughs> yeah. in terms of photography, so you only had yeah. adults. Yeah. And yet you kept bringing in these really moving photos, like these really loving and subtle and moving photographs of your family. And so many times I've actually, teared up um like talking you talking about your brother was so like sweet and and real to me and you're the way you photographed him like as a adult single male I mean that's not like high up on my first inspiration list is like just like let's go follow a one dude around for a day right but somehow you did it in such a beautiful way and whatever you were able to tap into there was um quite moving so Thank it's like quite impressive to me <laughs> how you photographed your yes. adult only family, you know? 
I encourage anyone and everyone to take take a look at Raquel's work because she has a very, very unique perspective. And um, I don't know, it's a, yeah, amazing. Thanks so much. And thank you for your sweet words. And thank you. I think it's not just to discover my vision, but you also uh, give me courage and uh, courage and like give me strength to embrace and follow my vision. Uh, I think it's that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's our hope. That's our, that's our goal, right? <laughs> we just actually pull a vision out of a hat and we say, this is yours. So right? We're like, so this. Raquel, yeah. your vision is going to be following <laughs> your adult brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you had your your vision was actually, it's it's quite clear to the three of us. It was very clear to the three of us. Every time we looked at your work, it's very distinct. But um that's the thing when you're learning and like growing your work, it's, it's uh, not always easy to go like, okay, well, is this working? You know? And so to have, I think outside feedback help you navigate, like, no, this is clearly the way that you see the world. Um, and you're, you're just a really good example of that. Your vision was very distinct, is distinct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting us share your work and for your sweet words. Like I said, okay. She's our Enneagram three efficient. That's right. Right. Hard yeah, working. that's another thing we do is we start every year with getting everyone's Enneagram test done, just so you all know. And if you've already done it, you're doing it again because we need to make sure you're <laughs> still the same after the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jen, can you all see my screen? Like it's still yes. Out? Okay, guys. Nice. Um, so tell us about this lovely, beautiful photo. So this photo, and and I agree with everybody else what they were saying. This this was a um, like a life changing course for me, and um, like photographically and also business. And I, I like I said, I I've, I've been with you for about three years now, <laughs> and um, there's still so much that I didn't do that I'm ready to take more courses, but I realize I need to take some time and, and actually let go back. Like, I think it was Jody who said, like, I know there's so much more stuff that I need to, that I want to do. Right. And um, now I have time, who knows, but maybe hopefully I will have time to do that. But um, I chose this photo because it's not, I love this photo. And um, this was um, in September, in 2020, it was one of the first times we got to go out and photograph people that were not living in the house with us. And, um, or at least for me. And uh, we went to a park, my kids are older, so I know parks are a pain, but um, I haven't been to a park with my children for a long time. So whenever I can go to a park with other people's children, I, I love it. <laughs> and, um, so I was, I was, you know, again, what's interesting, what's happening, what's interesting. I was looking around and all of a sudden I heard a boom and this little boy hit his head so hard oh. on one of the bars. And, um, I just like, as a mother, my gut went, <gasps> no. And with the camera, I just, in my mind, I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> Like something's happening <laughs> and it's something interesting. And just, she was so loving with him. Like he was hurt. She kept him calm. She, you know, it was beautiful. Like it was just so beautiful how she was handling it. And I was so, I was in the right spot and I got closer and I could hear the three of you get a little closer, get a little closer. and. Um, I pretty sure I got everything that I wanted in the frame. You know, it was, I, I, um, I do a lot of cropping or, you know, I used to do a whole lot more cropping <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got close. This is what it was interesting to me. I, you know, I wanted her hands on the side of his face. I wanted it. So like, I can hear her talking when I'm looking at this, I can hear her calming him down. And I don't know if anybody else can, and I don't really care so, <laughs> because I can hear it. And I just like, 
like Anna was saying, like I'm I, no Jody, like I'm proud of this photo, whether anybody likes it or not, just because this was this was intentional. And this was one of the first like truly intentional photos that I was able to make. And it wasn't just, I think this is what I want. Yeah, let me crop out the rest of it. It was, this was what I wanted. And it, it, mm -hmm. it in my mind, it was as good as, or on, on the screen, it was as good as it was in my mind. So that's, that's what this photo is. Mm -hmm. So. And, and besides the, the photography and the business side, I have to say it was so amazing to be with all these amazing people that were in the class with us. And like, it was such, there was such, I guess, synergy because everybody just built on it and built on it and built on it. And um, like, I would reach out to people or people would reach out to me, like, are you having a bad day? How are you doing? What's happening with you? And, and it was just so great. And we still like my accountability group, we still zoom, you know, we still Amazing. text. It's usually, um, like maybe every week, every other week, like we're going to zoom next week because we haven't talked to each other in about a, like a month and a half, but it's, it's, what's just like business questions, personal questions. You know, we were complete strangers. I didn't know anybody in this class. I didn't know anybody. And a few of them have come and visited um, New York and I've gotten to photograph their families in New York and I've loved it. And then I've got to meet them in person. And it's like, like an old college friend or something that you haven't seen in a million years. It just, everybody just clicks. And then there's another larger group and we um, were, it's another accountability group. So we're um, making sure that we post on social media. So there's every Wednesday, which I'm late, I guess I'm not doing it this week, but every Wednesday there's a theme and a quote and everybody who's involved uh, tags themselves. And we post it pretty much, you know, the same window every week. And um you know, it's just great. It's great to see what other people are doing and what's, you know, what everybody's, what's happening with everybody and um, like how their businesses are growing. So it's just, it's amazing. And, and yeah, like sometimes it goes fast. Sometimes it goes slow. Like I got a referral from somebody. I photographed their family a few years ago for a portfolio um, shoot. And now I'm, I have a shoot lined up for a few weeks. Originally, she thought, oh, maybe just two hours. Now she's thinking three hours. Now she's, you know, it's the more we're discussing and talking and, and um, the more she wants. And it's, it's great because I, I hate talking on the phone. I'm not a business person. I hate marketing myself, but it's just real. So it's not, I don't feel like I need to um, pretend. I don't need to to be something I'm not because I feel confident enough that I will get, I will get the photos. I'll get stuff that I want. I'll get stuff that I like and they will like it too. So. Sorry. I wanted to see your face bigger while you were, <laughs> <laughs> I started getting selfish. I was like enough of this beautiful photo. Let's see that beautiful face. Um, Jen, I wanted to say that you are totally selling yourself short with being like, oh my God, I have so much left to do. You have done so much. Jenna, back me up on this. Like, yeah. Yes. You 100%. have like, been killing it and you're like out there and, and like, you know, going to businesses, talking to people, like putting yourself out there, like, like crazy. Yeah. You know, your yeah. website all done. You got your, like you have done, like, what are you talking about? You're no, but you guys, you guys kicked me, you know, like you were, I have been talking about going to like some small businesses for years. And then it took till now for me to feel confident enough to actually go do it. So, well, we had to hold you. your feet to the fire, yes. <laughs> but that's the thing is, is once you do it, you always, you're like, oh my God, like that. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Like this worked. this was so great. Mm -hmm. And you so have it in you. And yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. What I was going to say, if we gave an award for the MVP for like this whole time we've been teaching this class, someone who has like found confidence and like really run with it, it's you. 
<laughs> and I know you've been working with Ash and Jenna since the N NMFA, but uh, just the amount of work you've put in, hard work, both professionally and personally is quite remarkable. Thank you. I, I also just want to talk, because we've been talking so much about like finding your own voice and intuition and finding yourself in your work. Like one of the things I love actually about that photo that you shared um, is that it's such a reflection of you as a person, you know, that it's your favorite doesn't surprise me at all because you, you know, you already know this, so I'll tell the world now, but like, I describe Jen, like a cup of tea, like a, like orange pico with milk. Do you know what I mean? Like something your mom's going to have for you whenever you go home. Like she's just a soft place to land. You're like gentle and loving and um, just like, you know, you're all, all of those things, but you're just so like safe and wonderful. And it's like coming home, talking to Jen is like coming home. And so your photos now reflect that of you. And, and it doesn't surprise me at all. And watching your work change from, you know, what I feel like you had sort of a range of different styles and approaches in, uh, but you have such a subtle, like the things that you pick out in life are quite subtle. Yeah. My baby is playing the harmonica in the background. I don't know if that's distraction or not. Um, but anyway, the, uh, in, in your work are these like really subtle, loving, like gentle, safe moments that are, are actually just such a reflection of you. It's not just your clients, it's you because you see those things, you feel those things. You had a reaction as a mother, you said it yourself, you know, um, but it's just so much about you and, and a way that I just find so charming um, and really fun to, to watch that come out in your work. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, but yes, I can't say enough about these ladies and this course and yeah. Thank you. We appreciate all of your um, time, energy and beautiful photos. And um, yeah, it's just been amazing seeing all of you. Like, I like little butterflies transforming. <laughs> Or <laughs> um, does anyone else have any questions for either us or the students or anything like that? I do want to mention really quick, this is 2023 is our last run of No More Fucking Around. We will be retiring the program after that. Um, I was joking before we started recording. I said, when they asked why, I'm going to tell them it's because we don't like each other anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so mean. <laughs> 100% a joke. It's the, the band's breaking <laughs> up. The band is breaking up. No, it's We're really breaking. my fault. I feel bad. It's it like is the person's fault. Anyway, I will, I will own it. Like the honest truth is I'm like desperately in love for the first time, maybe ever. And I have these dreams of just living out in the country with some mini cows and some goats. <laughs> um, just shooting some every now and again and just moving forward with moving in a different direction with my career so yeah. what you're saying is kirsten found her intuition in this course kirsten, and yeah. it's kirsten becoming her true has, self and kirsten, i'm going to say that's thanks to us i i agree i actually agree the clarity cool book, we, so. the clarity we have brought her <laughs> i mean but yeah okay. it will we are yeah. sad but 2023 will be our last run of this program. So if you've been like sitting on it, like, eh, maybe I'll do it next year or this or that, don't wait, do it now. Um, it's yeah. the perfect time. So it's the last time for the three of us working together in a, in yeah. a program anyway. We'll, we'll all have different iterations of life, I'm sure afterwards, but. Sure. I'm all, yeah, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. You can blame it all on me. It's my fault. It's okay. okay. I'll take okay, it. I'm breaking up. <laughs> and it's because um Harry Styles over here. <laughs> we can we can blame it on Mitch. We'll just blame it on my yes. partner. Thanks yeah. a lot, Mitch. You it's and always your... a, it's always the man's fault anyway. So let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> you, and amazing, you and your amazing body, Mitch. <laughs> God, he would be dying if he heard this right now. <laughs> oh my love him. <laughs> um, Anna, mm -hmm. was there any other questions that you saw come through? Um, yeah, there's one about um the getting close um i always struggle with how to get in there what holds me back is that being autistic it's really tough for me to read my presence if my presence is welcome or intrusive 
Does anyone else struggle with knowing when you are allowed inside inside the bubble? Can I take this to start? Yeah. 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 Okay. If you're invited to photograph people, this is not like if you're on the street, but if you are invited and hired, you can assume that your presence is welcome. And the space is much more open than say, you know, a random guy in a Argentinian bar <laughs> while the World Cup is going on and you're basically sitting on his lap trying to get a photo of the person across from him. That's different. Um, but when they hire you, you can assume that you have a lot of flexibility and freedom in terms of space and proximity. And that humans by nature will tell you whether it's verbally or non-verbally if they're uncomfortable and it's not subtle they will make it clear if it's very uncomfortable for them to be within your space but i think the way to operate is if you have been hired to shoot that it is kind of an open game in terms of how close or how far you are from you and your subjects I agree. I think the other thing that to maybe kind of put your mind at ease with this is maybe just mentioning it before, like what I, cause I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm always, I have to tell myself back up. Like I'm way, I'm like Anna Bachhaus. Like I'm like, get like back up Ash, like get out of their face. Um, and so, but I let people know, like, just so you know, I'm going to be really close to you. Like I'm, you know, and, and if you need me to back up, just let me know. But I like, this is how, how it is. And so I give them the go ahead to let me know if I'm making them uncomfortable. Um, and with doing that to what, and Anna, in my case, we have to tell ourselves to start out further back and then move closer in your case with saying, Oh, how do I get closer? We want to tell you the opposite, which is start out really close and as you need to, you can move back. Um, so just letting them know, just so you know, I'm going to be starting out real close. Um, give me a heads up if you don't like it, but this, this is how I can, you know, photograph best or whatever. They'll trust you in that process. My um, favorite is when I'm hired for a day in the life session, but I, sometimes I don't sleep over the night before I just like arrive in the morning and it's usually nine times out of 10, it's the mom that has hired me. So like, I'm like in the bed, like meeting yeah. the dad for the first time. And that's when I am like over them like this with a camera. And I'm like, we're just going to get real close real soon. Like real quick. It's just going to happen. Um, and, and if it feels uncomfortable to me or like, I feel like a tiny bit of awkwardness with in the moment, I just address it and it makes it go away. Like you're going to get used to me. Oh, this is awkward. Like meeting, um, or I'll just make some joke, uh, and that usually dissolves any sort of awkwardness. So it's just another way that I handle it. Um, I recently talked about it on the weekend being like, I meet a lot of dads in bed. <laughs> <laughs> So certain, a certain life. Um, okay, I'm going to go back a couple, uh, quite a few minutes in our conversation and also in the chat. So one, I had said earlier about um, the thing about getting close is different for everybody, right? So it's not just that you should get closer. It's that there's some reason why you're not getting close. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so, so it's working on figuring out what that is for you. Now, I'm going to go back into the chat because Matthew, this is from Matthew, right? Um, you yeah. had mentioned that you're autistic and that that does allow you or you're... Um, you're struggling with knowing and like actually reading that whether the social cues are in there or not. So one thing that um, Kirsten said is really important, which is that when you're invited into the scene, that is one, um, or like to, to photograph a family, that is one way that you can know that you are allowed to get close. And so another thing you can do is actually talk to your clients ahead of time and say, I have trouble reading social cues because I'm autistic. I'm going to get close during our session. I'm going to tell you that up front so that you know it's going to happen. And now I know that, you know, it's okay for me to be in there. Um, so setting yourself up for success and like maybe coming up with some formulas to help you in that scenario, because um, it may not be helpful for you to know that we find it easy to get close when you're still struggling with reading, whether it's okay for you to get close, right? And that's where this process is so individual. You also mentioned, I was just kind of going through the comments quickly, um, that you use a long lens as a way of getting closer, but you're, you feel like you're missing that connection 
um, in the images because of that. And the truth is, yes, that is what's going to happen because you've put distance between you and the client, not the client, but your subject. Um, and so the truth is there will be distance in the photograph. So taking those steps to figure out how, however that looks for you, but um, I would encourage you to figure out how to take those steps to get closer and to be able to, to shoot on a wider lens so that you can be a part of the moment. And I think you're going to see a huge difference um, in your work if you're able to do that. Absolutely. I know yes. you're going to. I'm being cute about it. You're going to see a huge difference in your work uh, when you physically get close and allow yourself to actually be a part of what's happening um, in front of you. And then and then also I'm just going to go another step further and say um, that like everybody has a unique perspective on the world and especially being autistic yours is going to be also unique and so part of it is in, uh, embracing like what do you see that we don't see yeah. um yeah. and that's part of how you kind of hone your voice and, and make images that really uh speak to people and yes matthew just it, no it's not a turn off to just come out and say it come out and no. say it no it's not, not at all. it's helpful for them too i always say i they're like oh you're like a fly in the wall i'm like nope not a fly in the wall at all. Super close. <laughs> you're like very in close your to face. You. you can smell my breath. <laughs> I'm, I'm the irritating fly that won't leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I said this once in a conference. I was like, this idea of a fly in the wall is hilarious to me because flies aren't on the wall. They're up in your shit, right? It's the exact <laughs> right. opposite. <laughs> they are in your food when you don't want them in your food. That's right. um, that we, we have this concept that to be documentary, you have to be far away and that's, um, or in a, in a or that is 100% not, true. Yeah, like not dialoguing with people. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, yeah. you know, uh, Jody. I might be able to help because this is an area that I struggle <laughs> quite a bit in the course. Um, I, mine's not social cues. Mine's more uh, personal. Mine's more like, oh, really making myself seen if I'm getting in there. Um, but what I've discovered being on the other side of getting closer is that those are the photographs from a feedback perspective that clients tell me they love the most, which my style before was quite environmental, small people, big space, and people like that as well. I'm not saying seek out external validation as a reasoning for trying different things with photography, but I, I, I don't, I've never resonated with the fly on the wall. Um, I think my new verbal cue when I'm talking to people, cause I do want to be in that space and it does feel like for my psyche, I need permission. Um, I approach it from a, I'm, I'm not a fly on the wall. I'm more like a really close family friend who's quite affectionate. Um, I tend to get real close to you and maybe even put my hand on you while I'm photographing you. I just reveal what I need to have permission to be in that space. And maybe that'll, I, I can see that evolving where I don't feel the need to say that anymore, but it's created a bridge for me to enter that space. And I definitely appreciate being in the close realm. Like the photo that I shared here was uh, taken in June. Once I discovered that that's where the sweet spot was, I've been playing in that space pretty much ever since. Um, so it, it is it is unnerving, but I think when you find your own languaging for entering into that space that feels good for you, there is a richness in getting close and seeing stories from that perspective. Thank you. And I, I also, um, I struggle with getting close, but I also feel that people expect you to get close. If they see your photos, there's no other way to get those photos mm -hmm. unless you're right there. So um, I guess relatively recently, I forget where I was. And I said something like, oh, excuse me. And they pretty much said, well, of course you're going to be here because this is the best place to see what you, what you want to get. So I think people get it, especially if you have work um, posted or, you know, that there's work associated with you that is from that perspective that is that close. So for sure, for sure. Um, Lauren asked, what, wait, what did, I saw it, hold on. Uh, what do you feel each one of you brings to the table? <laughs> well, for me, it's just my sparkling personality <laughs> or nothing less. <laughs> uh, bathrobe. <laughs> my bathrobe. A bathrobe, a weird, creepy baby head. A baby mask behind me. I have a couple <laughs> other baby heads also in my off. Basically, my choice in decor, my choice, <laughs> my choice in fashion, and my sparkling personality. Um, 
Yeah, that's about it. No, for <laughs> real. What do you bring? Really. What yeah. do I bring? Do you want me to do it for you? I know. I was yes. gonna say I, I'll I'm do just, it for you too. <laughs> I was. Gonna, yeah, I think you all should answer that. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Maybe. Jerry. Oh yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe we should let the students answer this. Like, I don't. But then I, I want know. to hear what Jenna says too, because she's so articulate. Yeah. <laughs> Again, no one, ahead. no one knows about it. Okay, go. Ahead. Who should we start with, Jody or, Ash. or my? Let's go. Oh, you go with Ash first, Jenna. Me? Okay, yeah. I'll tell you, Ash things. Yeah, because just you know what, I'm going to start with Ash because we um haven't talked about it in detail, but in the in the business section. Ash is when you sum it up it's a lot of like we look at things from the inside out and it's very intuitive and whatnot but actually Ash has endless work worksheets she's broken down how to be intuitive from the beginning to the end to a fucking t so if you decide you want you start of course being one kind of photographer and you decide at the end because Kirsten made you divorce your husband and now you're a different photographer that you're something else you can go back and do it step by step for, with Ash's business plan again. There's no guesswork and she does it intuitively. So she starts with intuition and then you build on it that way. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It totally parallels how we teach photography, right? Which is, it's about you. And now let's go from there. But again, it's not like, okay, well now, you know, what do you, what do you feel free to create with your website? No, no, no. She's like, how do you need people to navigate this? It's like a flow chart almost. I don't know if it's a flow chart, but like there's literal- Yeah, it is a flow chart. Yeah, the way you teach it is a flow chart. It's like literal fucking questions you have to answer before you answer the next question, which I actually love. And the best part is it's less intimidating if you just answer them in order and not try to jump ahead. People don't always do that, but, but yeah, it's and that's, nice. It is organized. Okay. You are the most organized of us by far. Which is you, saying a lot because I'm not that organized. <laughs> you are organized. You are thorough. Yeah. You are mindful, but also um, you're very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I think those are all necessary components to really good business uh, education that I don't see a whole lot. Like it's, you have the heart, but you also have the head when it comes to business education. And that's why I've, um, that's why I've wanted to teach with you because I don't have that. And it's, you know, for me, and I don't know about Jenna, but I've learned through even my own business, like to identify things I'm not good at. And you literally are good at everything I'm not good at. And I think that's a really beautiful, like, like it's just the, the qualities you have to give to the students are nothing I could ever offer a hundred percent. Thank you. And it's, it's very, like you said, just to, just to really emphasize it, it's the head and the heart together. Cause it's not just like, you get a lot of mm -hmm. uh, head business advice. You can find that anywhere. Like yeah. business advice, it's from the head, but the combination of the two is what, yeah. you know, it also drives you not to want to kill yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it makes the work interesting and meaningful and drives yeah. you towards like you know building a business you're proud of and you actually want to work in right you know um but that yeah. also works and makes money i think that's the finding the balance portion for me is that so i do have like the worksheets and the things and the step by step for because i want people to actually implement what they're learning i don't want them to just say oh here's the business information and like now what do i do with it so there is like step by step of you, this goes to this, this, and it all builds. So at the end, you have like this amazing marketing plan, marketing calendar, branding, like all of it together, along with your amazing portfolio, um, through the photography and the lessons. Um, but in addition to that, and again, I think the entire program photography and business is based around intuition and who you are, because I'm the first one that will say I'm a hot mess express. So even though I am organized, for being a hot mess. And my, I, my thought process behind that is that like, I always feel like if I can do this, anybody could, um, have a business that is, uh, because I am, I think for us creatives, we are kind of all over the place. So we need to find what, what works for us. And I think that's a little bit, that is the difference of what I've ever seen taught from business in the photography realm is usually it's, uh, mentors or instructors coming to you saying, you have to do X, Y, and Z. This is exactly how you do this, that, and the other. And instead I'm coming to you with the information and explaining to you how you can choose 
you know, the pros and cons between each way of doing things or doing a combination of things that you feel is going to work within your life in your messy brain, if you're messy, like I am, um, versus saying, no, you have to do it this way, or you're not going to succeed. You need to post to social media three times per day, or you're not getting clients. I will never tell you that because that's simply not true. Yeah. It's simply not true. So, because there's 900 other things you could do to get clients. And I'm going to tell you what those things are and then help you create a plan to do those things that feel best for you. So that's kind of what I bring. And then I like to, um, of course, give, I also will come and give critique and feedback with the photography and um, yeah, make sure that what you are saying in your words is matching your photographs. So yeah. that's like one of my biggest things is if you're describing your photography in one way, and we're looking at it and I'm seeing something completely different. It's my job then to say, Hey, should we go back to the drawing board? Are you shooting from your guts and just using words that you think sound pretty? Or is this really how you do see the world and you should be shooting this way and you're not there yet. So that's kind of my job in the whole process of things beyond getting you to make money. Um, Students, do you have anything to add? <laughs> I feel like I echo everything that's been said, but the only thing I would add in is you're also so encouraging. Mm. Like you don't just give us the materials, send us on our way, and then kind of leave it at that. There's a very uh, empathetic, this is not easy material. This is very revealing. Yeah, it's going to suck at points. It's going to be really painful at points. Like, I don't know, you humanize marketing and advertising in a way that like I don't, I don't know there's just a really helpful bridge to like walk through the material and go in there with the intuition but you're also so like positive that's one two would be um I love when you're like what do you want like what what does what does the ideal aspect what does it look like like it being framed in that matter where it's put on you to build the business life that you want mm -hmm. and not necessarily the business life that's focused. That's, I mean, I, I, there's an element where client focus is good, but you're the person running the business. I love that you put the emphasis on us to get clear on how we want to run that business and what our work-life balance can look like. And then you're in there being like, yeah, girl, get it. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. I just, I find that to be like your shining moment. My husband always laughs at me because every time, like I'll get like every few weeks as a student will be like, oh my gosh, I just made like a $6,000 sale or like something crazy. And I'm like, I usually read these messages in bed because of the time difference. And so I'm like in bed, I'm like, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. and he's like, what are you doing? Like my student made six. He's like, but you didn't make 6,000. Why are you wiggling your butt like that? Is that your 6,000? And I'm like, well, it's like I made it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I made it, but yeah. Thank okay. you. That's very kind. So for Jenna, I, no, no, I've got, I've got something for me and Kirsten. I have a whole vision of what, of how this works between the two of us. Cause I think, well, you tell me if it's wrong. You know, those Christian shows on TV where you come up and you get healed by people. <laughs> <laughs> this time My body Kirsten. is already having a very um, yeah, you'll love explicit it, you'll love reaction it. to Christian. <laughs> just, go. just wait, just wait. You bring a photograph up to Kirsten. Okay. And we think it's a photograph about a kid at a park, but Kirsten will look at that photograph and be like, I can tell that you're the third child. You had an egg salad for lunch. And one of the things that hold is holding you back is that you're afraid of intimacy because your father was cold to you when you were young. <laughs> and, and the person is like, what? How did you know that? Yes. <laughs> and then she slaps you on the forehead. You fall back. Now, some people go like that's all I needed and they fly up into the sky with these wings and then their photographs change and she knows exactly <laughs> you're going to find your intuition she found it for you and sometimes Kirsten's tired she can do it tired she can do it super awake doesn't matter Kirsten knows exactly what's going on for you without you telling her anything okay some people fall off that stage a little bit and then I catch them <laughs> <laughs> with like a little headset and I go do you want me to explain that to you in greater detail <laughs> do you want a few more steps do you need a, a bit of a calculation on how to move forward I can help you with that here's some steps here's the questions you ask yourself and I slowly put you back on stage then Kirsten <laughs> gives you a great quote and then you fly back up in the sky with your wings and you go I did it <laughs> I found myself 
and then and then Ash comes in. Do you want to make some money? <laughs> and then you're rich. <laughs> and that's how this course works. Exactly that's like it. that. I don't think we need to expand. Do you? <laughs> no, that is so true. That is so true. <laughs> Oh, like I've never, I've never heard truer, truer <laughs> description of the services. It's amazing. It's why, just I mean, why, uh, I went, why, why did I write the course description? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> You're right. You're you right. should have been writing this. Oh god, this was amazing. It's so Anyhow, real. Any further questions? <laughs> <laughs> You're Nothing answered answered at all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sums it up, folks. That's pretty that much is. what that the course feels like. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, can expand. you can expand now if you want. You, wait, have you? I'm having these visuals, these like competing visuals from two different films right now that you're describing. That have you guys seen Four Christmases with uh, Vince? Yeah, I watched that one of my Christmas years, oh, but I forget. God, it's so funny when when Vince and um Reese like they have to do the nativity scene, like because her mom like that takes her to church. So that like the first visual, and then the other visual is Saved, the movie Saved with oh, um Mandy Moore and um what Kevin from Home Alone, Macaulay Holy Culkin. Boy. Yeah, those yeah. two movies I just highly recommend watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay also um have you guys seen god's favorite idiot it's the new um, melissa mccarthy show on netflix oh it's fascinating it's fun it's similar similar vein it's like this guy gets chosen by god and then they learn that like all religions are right it's really cute it's her husband and anyway oh it is like melissa mccarthy it's it's a yeah. cute wait is her is it her husband from um uh bridesmaids who is yeah. the secret yeah. agent on the plane right that's yeah. her husband yeah 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 okay yeah. Oh, Anyways, God. we hope that answered the question. <laughs> jody you can expand if you want i just thought maybe i'd give the visual <laughs> well it's i, I it's think like, that's how it works it's a bit painful but it's the most it's like the best awakening ever like i don't know i don't know if that's helpful but like yeah you jenna nailed it um, <laughs> but at the same time you jen i, I would say where you, the cradling at some point there is a version of kirsten that's also in that space yeah like, this yeah, is yeah. why this is why and then you're like oh work from that space it's still yeah. helpful yeah yeah I think it's a lot of crossover with the three of us is the thing. Oh, big time. And Matthew wrote on here, holistic. That is actually the perfect way to describe us is being holistic. Um, and actually one of my lessons is described as holistic. So oh. <laughs> it's called holistic branding. But I anyway, it. <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, um, no, I think we make a good team. We, we like um I forget who said it now I'm sorry was it you Anna someone said that we compliment each other so it's oh funny because you'll see sometimes we might I give a little bit differing of opinions but then the other one will be like actually you know what now that you mention it you're right that does sound about right or what you know or we'll be like no no don't listen don't listen to Jenna <laughs> go with Kirsten <laughs> Kirsten has you flying up. <laughs> that has never happened. I am always right. <laughs> actually, no, you know what? I actually am going to interject. The only thing I have actually not found any, uh, I haven't found in our course situations where I'm like, oh, this person gave you counter to it advice. What I found is different ways of wording the same idea. Exactly. Yeah. They're often always the same idea. I don't ever go like, oh, I can't believe she said that. That's not like a thing that happens uh, in my experience, to be honest. You guys aren't on my one-on-ones. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> I'm totally joking. I'm no, only I wrong don't. in Ashley's one-on-one. The other thing is Jenna and I have been teaching together for almost eight years, I think. I, mm -hmm. I just saw like something about us going to Australia. And I think that was seven, eight or seven, seven or eight years ago. Um, and so for us, in terms of like the photo end of it, not only are we very much in alignment, uh, in many ways in terms of like approach to photography and, and interpreting photography and teaching it, um, we also are in alignment with just being human beings. And so yeah. the, the, the compliment of that 
is natural. Like it just, it just happens. Um, and absolutely how our brains work, me being, um, ADHD and sometimes delivering very direct, uh, response and sometimes forgetting to break that down. Sometimes that is the beauty of Jenna is that she like picks up at, at the end of that and breaks it down in a way that sometimes I cannot. And I've said this for the last almost decade is I feel like I'm constantly learning from her um, all the time. And so there's so much benefit in having all three of us and Ash. I mean, I know nothing about business, so I'm learning anything I can from from others that are much wiser than me. Uh, It's just where there's holes or pockets in our knowledge or our communication or um, our relationship to particular themes, we make up for it. Like as a trifecta, I feel like it's a really nice triangle. A so. triple threat. A triple yeah, trifecta. Threat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, just also to expand, like I, I think that actually you have great ways of explaining things. And the, I don't even know that I fill in a gap that you don't have. I just have a lot, a lot of things to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite chatty yeah. and some people are chatty <laughs> and <laughs> want to expand <laughs> or like need a different angle and vice versa like it's just again this is a lot of the same this is why okay I don't know this is what I love about this like everyone's saying that they felt like they found their intuition it just makes me so happy because it's not a course that turns you into something else right it just turns no, you more no. into yourself and that just I don't know that makes me so thrilled yes it's very grounding. Yeah. We meet you where you're at, which yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that other instructors don't. I can tell you from my own experience with amazing mentors, there was always a little something missing in terms of meeting me exactly where I was at, that mm-hmm. I wanted to fill that with working with other students. And I do, I don't have a lot of confidence in a lot of things. Um, one thing I do have confidence in, not only for me, but for the both of you as well, is simply seeing people and meeting them where they're at and encouraging them to move forward in that direction and not to divert anybody, but to naturally, it's almost like um, a river and like pushing that, that water, like a little bit of pressure forward and where, whatever direction that you're meant to go is, is us just supporting you in terms of not having to paddle so hard. That's mm-hmm. kind of just how I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Good way to describe yeah. that. Yeah, I do feel that way. So, um, and then the bonus of that is again, working with your peers and your classmates and having that those accountability groups and the relationships that get built there. And like, I really think I'm sad that this is going to be the last year of this program, because I really think it's something really fucking special. Way to Thanks, go, Kirsten. <laughs> can, I, can I add one go, more? Like, <laughs> what? What's can I have one more like really positive piece? Sure. That, um, I think if you're self-employed, you wind up spending quite a bit of time alone trying to figure the business stuff out solo and like contemplating a lot of those really big questions on your own like aside from like the learning experience and having such great mentors going through it the other piece that was super awesome was meeting a group of photographers every single week to talk shop oh yeah like that was I think probably my I I remember every Wednesday being like ooh. (laughs) I think it's Wednesday. It's like, <laughs> yes, here we go. We're gonna talk about the t- like that's just so beneficial just to be in that space and hearing other people's concerns and then hearing the advice that comes up, ha- you having a concern and then having yourself be heard and advice being brought up. And then just generally talking about creativity and photography. I mean, it was just such an awesome thing every week to look forward to. <clears throat> I enjoy it the same way too, Jody. I'm That's in a stage right thing. now with my youngest where she's sick all the time. So I have a lot of like, a lot of night wakings and sleepless nights, including last night. But when I get up in the morning and I have to come to one of these Zooms, I'm always like, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, like nothing happened. I feel, I actually, I'm the same, like, cause when we've had 
time off like between programs or whatever and we're not meeting regularly I feel kind of like bummed out like yeah <laughs> it's been you the know? worst it's been the pits it's since so <laughs> June because it's like oh just yeah. want people to talk shop with <laughs> yeah. or just like hang out with I know yeah yeah talk about everything because like the topics will diverge you'll you'll talk about other things as well which is right. funny and maybe awesome. we should also mention that like yeah the course is 100% called, professional like well, but, I mean the course is called no more fucking around so that's one of the questions I had on there was it's, why it's very is, real why is it called no more fucking around it's because this is like again this foundation it's like not a band-aid solution like the idea behind this program is to have you have everything you need to be out there. Even if you didn't ever take another workshop again, like you would still be able to find fulfillment and success in your photography and in your business from this program. That's why it's called no more fucking around. Do we fuck around? Yeah. We do a whole lot of fucking around. <laughs> yeah. But that's like, like the, that was kind of like the best part. <laughs> <laughs> I love when it's like, okay, we're not going to record anymore, right? We're going to record. We're going to pause the recording oh, and yeah. tell the story. Yeah, it's just hey. like you, you build a community, hmm. and we try not to fuck around. But all the people in the end do the same. We all somehow do it, and and we learn with with the others' experience, and we learn with the mistakes of each other, and we grow together. And we cheer each other up when one has a bad day sometimes or one is not in such a good day and we share and it's building a community also that goes after the course as Jennifer said we just we continue the legacy of the NMFA and we continue chatting having zooms and it's so good because like Jody said it's so lonely sometimes you know yeah uh, we feel so lonely we we do everything in our business and it's just uh, yeah it's good to have those peers that you can just trust and that safe space that you can just be yourself and just let it all all out so yeah totally just well, enroll it. Just enroll. Yeah, get on <laughs> it. It's the last year. Just do it. It's the last Ash, year. Don't miss it. Yeah. If Jenna and I teach it or lead it, I feel very confidently in saying we do not lead with any sort of ego, yeah. just experience to share. And we really just want to be a part of the group. And so we're just real people. All of us are real people and outside of business. And wanting to curate and strengthen your your photo skills uh i personally believe that our photography is an extension of who we are and so with that comes just being real sometimes and sometimes that means stopping the recording and just chatting about our days or laughing about the irony or the ridiculousness of being a parent or being a business owner or just being a human being. And I'm not going to feel bad about that at all. It's just part of the experience. And yeah. I just wanted to put that out there that like, that is part of the experience working with us. Yeah. It's fun and funny and kind of gross. And <laughs> it was gross that time. <laughs> oh my God. I can't. Anyways, does anyone have any other questions before we wrap, wrap this up? <laughs> Um, join us. You won't regret it like at all. I think I can confidently say that the vast majority of the students who have put in the work have more than earned their investment back. Um, and what else was I going to say? Oh yeah. We have little bonuses this time for signing up. So make sure you get those before they expire. I keep pushing back the date a little bit but I think <laughs> I'll stop doing that because I forgot we were going to do this live so I was like oh shit I should probably do it after the live um well I love all you ladies I so love much. all of you um and it's good yeah. seeing everybody's faces and Anna you up in my right quarter I don't know I think it's different for everybody where Anna is but like I feel like you're part of the program yet not. And I like miss your face. So I'm going to have to come to Europe and see you sooner than later. You better come um, see us. 
Well, part of our part of the curriculum of our course is objectifying Anna's husband at some point. Yes. <laughs> so if you like hot Spanish men. <laughs> Every now and then he just I has to come I up. Take a course. This has literally been an ongoing joke with Jenna and Anna and I for like what six years, five years. Yeah, it's going on six years. <laughs> Anna was in our workshop in Germany. Yeah, hot. I think that was in 2010. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little and, later. Oh no. No, no, no. no. Like 16 <laughs> no. or 17. No. We had babies. I forgot what year we're in. Yeah. Our, our girls 17. were like a year old, right? Yeah. I think our yeah. girls it was were 2017 was the yeah. Germany yeah. workshop. Yeah, 17. And you yeah, Anna was in the in the class in the workshop. And so we were going through her photos <laughs> and we got quite distracted. But <laughs> What Every time your husband, it wasn't just us. It was the collective group of people that yeah. were like, oh, oh. And, <laughs> and every course since then, every course since then. <laughs> well, what can I say? He's, he's nice too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aww. All right. Okay. Thank you everyone uh, so much for joining us, for showing your photographs and talking about yeah. your experience and also for answering our audience questions <laughs> I don't know why that feels funny saying it but um we really appreciate you and yeah. we're glad to have you as alumni fuckers yeah. <laughs> um I love you all happy Hanukkah happy Christmas happy Kwanzaa happy New Year um all of the holidays and if you celebrate none happy life every day That's and right. um yes I'm That's hoping right. to see you all soon and go to dfpeducation.com to find out more info about no more fucking around so that you can come fuck around with us. <laughs> Bye, I everyone. Love you all. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.